If you smell what the rot is drinking, the rot says, the rot says, the rot says, know your booze and put whiskey in your mouth. <laughs> Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the most electrifying channel on Whiskey Tube, The Rock Gut Review, starring yours truly, The Rock, five time champion of the World Whiskey Federation. Tonight, I am joined by these two jabronis. Oh, yeah. We're going. <laughs> Hi, I'm Superman. What's up, jabroni? <laughs> <laughs> And who's that? Who's that down on the bottom row? I'm a confused Russian baseball player that plays. I play for the Packers. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, thank you all for coming. Uh, you guys, I'm sure you know Jason of Mash and Drum. Oh, there he is. There he is. Yeah, he's 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 the most important one here. You don't even have to worry about me. Um, <laughs> what do you mean? It's your show, buddy. <laughs> Uh, and then Whiskey Crusaders down in the bottom. Matt was kind enough to join us for the for the evening. No problem. Uh, Thanks for all right. Me. So uh, this was this was the idea for this show actually started because of something we talked about on your channel, Matt. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. It was. Yeah, yeah. So you I actually I actually asked permission if we could do it on my channel, and you graciously said yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so we're talking about the best whiskey to come in a plastic handle. Um, now, I think this was a little tough for me because I didn't have access to that much great whiskey in plastic handles. Um, so I kind of picked three of the ones that I thought were like more or less solid. Um, so I've got this one I think might might surprise some people, but it's Fleischmann's Rye. Um, then we got Scoresby Scotch and Old Crow. Uh, what, what are you guys? What do you guys got on? Got in your, your bottles tonight? I've got the uh, Tom Moore Baldwin Bond. What was what was that? Tom Moore Baldwin Bond. It's hmm. a bourbon. Yeah, I don't even know that one. It's freaking awesome. I found it for twenty bucks at a liquor store that was nice and dusty and it's tasty. <laughs> nice and dusty. It's just the way you like to find them. Perfect. And then I think we were talking about what you already have, Jason. What and you've got Yeah, I've got the uh ancient ancient age 10 star. Nice. This is a Buffalo Trace product. It's basically um cheap Blantons. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, this is uh, the six-year Heaven Hill Green Label, which I absolutely love for a, a big plastic bottle. Another big plastic bottle I usually get sometimes is the Wild Turkey 101, which is one of my favorites. But um, the big ones are coming in glass, so I couldn't really find a plastic one of it, unfortunately. Yeah, no, that is that is the problem I was running into. I couldn't find – I found a lot of decent stuff in glass handles. Um, all right. But before we go any further, let's see who's all in the chat. Brad LeClaire is in the chat. Uh, he was actually supposed to be on this stream tonight, um, but he his baby was having some issues, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, who else? We've got Mike Lizak, Steve A., and Trev Wilson holding it down as our moderators. Uh, big thanks to them. Andrew Spirell, I see, is in the chat. Charles Ashworth, Jermaine Compton, Victoria C. How you doing, Victoria? I got to meet you down in Austin. That was fun. Donald Rance is always good to see you. Brandon Elliott, another Austin, Austonian, Austinian that I got to meet. I don't think he's actually from Austin. I just met him there. <laughs> um, John Gunsel. Hey, Whiskey Jason coming all the way from Germany to hang out. Um, um, and then, yeah, Johnny Drum. I think that's everybody. I think that's everybody in the chat right now. If I miss hey. anybody, I'm sorry. Let me know. I'm a terrible person for, for happy uh, happy birthday to Johnny Drum. He's turning forty. Oh wow! Happy birthday! That's fantastic. 
Totally. Oh, yeah, and it's your birthday, too, isn't it, Matt? That's right. Howdy, it's your birthday? Yeah, that's why I was real late. We went out to birthday dinner. That's why I didn't get out until, like, two minutes before you started. Oh, you why, have, why would you, you want have, to spend your birthday hanging out with me, though? That's the I like, question. Because I like you have, uh, you have vodka and cabbage? I, I do. <laughs> I, I have an artillery shell of vodka, in fact. <laughs> I should go grab them because it'll be hilarious. No, no, yeah, you should. You have an artillery shell? I'll, I'll go grab it. It's funny. Okay. As well. I want to see what the hell that looks like. Um, all right. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get into this. I like Whiskey Jason just said, Ed, what the fuck? Um, oh, are we past yeah. five minutes? Yeah, yes, so we are. We can swear. Awesome. Yeah, I literally, I literally signed on Ed's live stream before it started. And he's just sitting there in that outfit texting or you were doing something on your phone. <laughs> And I literally thought I like hacked into the wrong live stream. I didn't know who the hell you were. <laughs> and then he looked up and I was like, Ed? Yeah, I know. I know. And then he looked up just like The Rock. He was like, Gotta do that. You gotta do that. Yeah, he kind of did the eyebrow on me. It was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Erica, Erica hates this. She refuses to be on the stream. Both because she doesn't want to drink anything out of plastic tonight, but yeah. also because she is so mad at me for shaving. She's a high class lady. Yeah, she really is. I don't know what the hell she's doing with me. Uh, oh my God, Matt literally pulled out artillery. Yeah, so my parents were over in Russia and they brought this artillery shot, Red Army Vodka, back. And I have this uh, lovely rifle of uh, vodka as well. So, you know, oh, yeah, I've seen those. The classic there's, thing we do yeah. around here. There's a Russian, there's a Russian liquor store near me that sells them like in Kalashnikov style bottles. <laughs> yeah, I've got yeah. some tequilas that are full of uh, their AK 47s and some handguns of, AK, of tequila. But these only ones I've got of vodka. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually from Russia, so they're cool. Very cool. Do they actually, do they actually taste? Like I've anything. never opened them. I'm assuming oh. they're horrible. <laughs> well, hey, perfect time to do it when you're on stream, right? Who knows? I'm like, I I've had these things for years and years and years. And I'm like, I don't know. It's probably going to kill me. It's probably full of KGB ju juice or something. Who the hell knows? <laughs> I mean, it's all in fuck. It's in Cyrillic and shit. I don't freaking know what the hell this thing oh, says. Man, yeah. So oh, who knows? It's I all irradiated. It. You drink, yeah. you drink it, and you grow like a third eye or something. Yeah, for real. They they got it from Chernobyl or something. <laughs> Did you guys hear about that though? The vodka that was uh distilled from uh it was like I don't I think it was wheat grown in the exclusion zone around Chernobyl. That's insane. I would not I would not drink that. That is a terrible idea. Yeah, well see, and that's that like that's the thing I think everyone thought when they first heard about it. But I guess they're saying that it's been long enough that the great that the distillation the like removes the minute amount of radioactive material in the in the wheat. I don't know if that's true though. That's the story the Russians would tell you. I'm thinking I wouldn't blame I wouldn't believe the Russians. Yeah. I don't know. There's only there's only like one bottle in existence though, so I don't think we're ever gonna have the opportunity <laughs> to drink it. Only if Vladimir drinks it first. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll consider consuming it. Yeah. All right. Shall we get into some of our plastic, these plastic Absolutely. bottles? Absolutely. Let's get something in the glass. Yeah. Let's do it. Oh, man. I've forgotten how solid Old Crow is. It's like, it's not great. It's not great, but... <laughs> So much better than everything else we drink on this channel, usually. The reserve is actually really good. Unfortunately, it's discontinued. Yeah, this uh, this Heaven Hill six year. I mean, it's a ninety proofer, but mm. six years old, good age on it, and you know, it's like it's it's right when Heaven Hill stuff starts to get real good, right around that sure. six seven years age. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, you start getting that peanuttiness. I mean, slightest hint of fruit, but I think it's still too young to get all those rich fruit flavors that sometimes you get in there. But it's a damn good pour for like 20 bucks. Yeah, you really can't well, beat I, that one. Yeah, I feel like Heaven Hill, they're, they are so good at making really cheap 
stuff that is actually decent. Yeah. They have let's, not, let's, not forget, let's not forget mellow corn. <laughs> oh, man. Mellow corn, I I have I've known people who really despise mellow corn. I don't I don't quite understand that hatred. I love <laughs> mellow corn. Mellow corn's great. Yeah, like it's it's very corny. Like it tastes well, like corn. Is. Yeah, I like it. And it costs ten dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I think that that super corniness or the fact that it tastes like candy corn is probably what puts some people off. And I could I could see that, but I mean, a hundred proof bottled and bond corn whiskey that's like ten dollars. What the hell? Where do you go wrong in that? Right. Exactly. Oh, absolutely. Um, hey, Jeffrey Patron is in the chat. Good to see you, buddy. Oh, he okay. is now plus fifteen. Okay. He's the Ooh. man. I tell everyone inspired the Rat Gut Review and unleashed this unholiness into the world. <laughs> oh, he's he's bringing up. Um, yeah, JTS Brown. I just I was just telling uh, I was just telling Ed. I just finished. I just polished off of uh, a plastic handle of JTS Brown. I love that stuff. It's like this and uh, JW Dant are just like the yeah. best. Dant's really good too. I always try to get them when I get to uh, Kentucky because they're not available here in Ohio. Yeah, yeah, no, we can get the regular Brown and the regular Dant, but can only get the bottled and bonds in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have the wait? Is that the bottled and bond you have right there, or is that the? This is the regular. I have a bottled bond in the room. Yeah. I. This is the regular. JTS Brown is probably my favorite, like just cheap as cheap as can be bourbon. Um, I have to agree with you. Because we're running it, it runs for like 10 bucks down here. Although I couldn't find a plastic handle of it. Otherwise, it would totally be on the show tonight. Yeah, I think I paid $14 for this handle of it. <laughs> yeah. I can't I can't say no to that. Remind me, I have to put like a hashtag on this video, like bottom shelf matters or something. Mm. Something for sure. Those bottom, bottom shelf does matter. No, there's absolutely. a lot of good stuff on the bottom shelf. There's also a lot mm -hmm. of bad stuff, but <laughs> yeah, there is some. There is some rather bad stuff on the bottom shelf, but there are some gems to be found. I mean, another one. Speaking of Evan Hill making cheap whiskey again, Evan Williams bottled and bond. Mm. That's, that's on true. sale. That's on sale here sometimes for like fourteen bucks. That's a hell of and a deal. It's a hell of a bourbon for that's always in my uh, whiskey room. Uh, whiskey Ace, how you doing, Whiskey Ace? Good to see you, buddy. Always happy to see you. Ace is the place for the helpful hardware folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um. I the only one I'm not entirely sure about tonight is Scoresby because I ne I really haven't drank a lot of this one. I'm gonna find out. That's I'm gonna a find scotch, out yeah. right the Scoresby. Yeah, I'm gonna find out what's going on with this. I wanted to have a couple. I was hoping I could have a couple of like uh, something from a couple different categories, but my mm -hmm. local liquor store doesn't sell any any plastic handles of Irish stuff. Yeah, I don't know of any plastic ones. Yeah, because the Jameson's all glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I'll have to go on a search next time at the liquor store and see if they have any plastic, anything else. You can find plastic scotch, like you said, but I don't know what plastic Irish. That's a good question. Right? Like you think that and would exist. It's not either. It's also glass. You would think an Irish an Irish plastic handle would exist. You would think. I mean, but. it seems counterintuitive. Oh. Actually, uh, I think Donald Rance is in the uh, in the chat. He's a, he would know. He's You're like right. the Pied Piper of uh, Irish whiskey. He would know mm -hmm. if there's a, one that comes in a in a plastic handle. Donald, help us out. We need, we need, we need help us, Donald. You're our only hope. Yes, yes, we need you, Irish, Irish <laughs> Yoda of whiskey. <laughs> yeah, he is. He really is. Irish Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> He's already green, I guess. <laughs> he, might, he might be. Yeah. <laughs> That's why he talks funny. He's always drunk. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Charles Asworth is really freaked out by you right now, Ed. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. I freak. I freak everyone out a little bit when I shave. Um, yeah. I guess yeah. one of those matters, Sarah or Erica, when you guys shaved. <laughs> <laughs> of course, at least you don't look like a little boy like Will does when he shaves. See, see, I think it's just because like the sideburns are still there. <laughs> that helps. Like get the sideburns and the pompadour make me look. Like if, if I didn't have the belt, you'd just think I was a a, a 
douchebag from New Jersey. You know, like a 19 year old douchebag from New Jersey. I used to live in I used to live in New York, and I could confirm that you do look like a yeah. A, that's you look like the douchebag in New Jersey in the winter time before they go tanning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, yeah, and that's that's the thing. Every anytime I shave, it's like a, a a little red hamster died and fell off my face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh Donald Rand. Okay, he said he had two of them. So he said, uh, 200, oh, 200 milliliter Jameson comes in plastic. Okay. Oh, Michael Collins in one point seven five. Oh, Michael Collins. Okay. okay, used to though. Used to. Hmm. Yeah. So now a mission we have to we have to accept and go look for. Right? I feel like that's a that's an important job. Absolutely. Okay. Next time I go, I'm gonna be looking for plastic bottles. <laughs> yeah, I think I think my MacGyver scotch, I think that's a glass. Pretty sure. All right. Okay, I'm take I took a little sip of this Scoresby. This is actually pretty fantastic for a twenty dollar perfect. Twenty dollar one point seven five. It's like slightly fruity. It's so, like it's so stringent, but it's not bad. So Scoresby is a blended scotch. Yeah, blended scotch, and I love it. It's 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 aged for three years. It's got an age statement, you oh, guys. I know. Oh, I, I got. Some. I'll write that. It's got an it. age statement. <laughs> <laughs> I also love that every single every single like really really kind of cheap scotch blend. It, it has to have like very rare. On the front label. Oh yeah, I love when they add that. Yeah, yeah. Like it I, can, ran it into, uh, I ran into a bourbon the other day at a store. I was in um, when I was in San Diego, uh, and I don't remember the name of it, but it had every single marketing term on it that you could think of. <laughs> it had extremely rare, very old, extra aged, limited release. I mean, every single one you could think of on one bottle it was insane. <laughs> I'm like, if you need that many uh, adjectives on your bottle, it can't be that good. Right, right. I want to find one. I want to find. I, there needs to be one that has hits every single like legal and marketing category. Yeah. So it's got to be single barrel, small batch, uh, grain to glass. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Something or you know, it's bonded, whatever. Yeah. Oh, Benjamin is asking, but did it say deluxe? I don't think it said deluxe, so maybe oh. I'm missing one. <laughs> oh, deluxe. Yeah, deluxe, deluxe is an important one, too. One. Yeah. I found two more plastic ones. Oh, early, early times. times and Clan McGregor. Oh, man, Clan McGregor. Oh, Clan McGregor, wow. That's what, when I when I was in college and I could afford something slightly better than old Thompson, I'd buy Clan McGregor. There you go. Yeah. That was... That was my thing. Clan McGregor's uh, my golf whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like this ancient age ah, a little bit better. Wait, wait, hold on, guys. Oh. oh, did someone just come into the stream? Possibly. It it looks like someone might be in the stream. I don't I don't think we had another guest coming in tonight. I, I, did StreamYard mess up? Oh my god. What is happening? I, I don't know. I. <laughs> yes. Who is Baxter? Baxter Belafonte? Wait, Ed, is that you? Holy crap, Baxter! What the hell are you doing here? Uh, didn't we have this call scheduled for next week or something? I maybe. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I can barely keep track. I'm drunk half the time. <laughs> well, you're usually bearded, so I don't. I don't know about this right now. <laughs> I. I don't. I don't know. Uh. Was this the conversation we were going to have about the panda bears and the bamboo shortage? Is that what this is? I, I, maybe. Maybe that was what this was. Did we – what were we doing with the pandas? Were we arming them? Did they have to defend the bamboo themselves? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, something like that. I, we, we got pretty into it. I, I don't know. But but how are you? 
You look I'm doing down. well, Baxter. I'm doing well. Are you um, are you here to sip some whiskey with us? Uh, yes, yes, I am. First of all, uh, you, you must be in your Halloween costume, right? Oh yeah, I am the Rot, five-time oh. champion of the worst whiskey watch championship, something like that. I thought you were going just for General White Jabroni, which. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, uh, whiskey, you say, right? Yeah, whiskey. That's that's what the Rocket Review is all about. You drink whiskey with us? Well, I was going to ask you about that. See, I watch your show quite often, and you only do whiskey. You know, uh, uh, tell me about that. Why? Why? Why don't you do like better stuff here? What? What? Better stuff. Better stuff. Well, what, better, what is better than whiskey, Baxter? I'm glad you asked. The best kind of whiskey, my friend, other than the presence of me, of course, is <laughs> none other than our best whiskey, the White Claw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See? You don't have to age it. You don't have to sniff it. You don't have to whatever it is you usually do with your dad sitting next to you. You just drink it. And it's fruity and it's celery and it's fantastic. Okay. You know what? You know what I think though, Baxter? I think when you come on my show and you start telling me that white claw is better than whiskey, I think those are fighting words. Huh. Like, I think you're looking. Yeah, I think you're looking for crap. Well, I will give it to you. It is your show. But uh, when Baxter Belafonte goes on any show, it becomes his show. So um, let's see what we got for other whiskeys here. Uh, let's see. These all seem to be white claws. Uh, I got Tabasco sauce. That's all I got. I, I, I got nothing. <laughs> tell, you what, tell you what, Baxter. Tell you what, Baxter. I'm gonna make you a deal. The time and place of your choosing, you and me, we're taking whiskey versus white claw. All right, that's what we're gonna do. You, you, your people get a hold of my people. Where it's going down. You understand? It's gonna be whiskey versus white claw, and we don't take prisoners here on whiskey too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll talk to my agent. Uh, what's the payday? Sorry? Uh, I'll talk to my agent. Uh, how much are we talking? What are, what are we getting paid here? I, I, this is the Rock Cut Review. We, we don't get paid anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you talk to your payroll coordinator about that? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll 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 be in touch, Baxter. We're gonna be in touch because this this isn't over. This isn't this isn't over by a long shot. You know, you're right. This is the start of a great rivalry in which I will inevitably win. Um, I do have to go. I've got a couple of calls lined up. Uh, um, David Letterman, ever heard of him? I've got a call scheduled with Rosie O'Donnell. Um, people just like to bounce ideas off of me, so uh, yeah, I, I gotta run. You guys drink your um juice boxes or your uh, what is it, Whi whiskey? <laughs> okay, uh, I, I gotta crack another while I'm at it, y yeah, yeah, I know. Fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> That is that is Baxter Belafonte, everyone, professional wrestler and uh, all around dickhead to the stars. Oh my gosh! And uh, apparently a white claw enthusiast. A white claw right. enthusiast, but we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna change that. We're gonna change that if it's the last thing I do. I swear that I swear that on my uh, on my honor as a whiskey tube, whatever I am. <laughs> Risky two bass. <laughs> All right. But pardoning that interruption, what were we talking about? I 
have no idea. I don't. I it went off the rails when I saw the White Claw and the man in the U.S. leather jacket. <laughs> um. Mm. Oh, but yeah, getting back, getting back to the whiskey. Um, the other one I had tonight, okay, Fleischmann's Rye. Every other thing I've ever had from Fleischmann's is absolutely terrible. <laughs> um, Super. Like, I don't think, I don't think, uh, I don't think, like, their gin is awful. Their vodka somehow is terrible. Um, but, and this may just be because I'm a ridiculous rye head. I actually really dig their rye. <laughs> I don't know why. Fleischmann's rye? Fleischmann's rye. Here. Like, it's not great. It's not great. I'm going to, I'm going to say that right now, but, um, yeah, it's, it is not bad at all. <laughs> Uh, okay, who else? Who's in the chat? Everyone is super confused about what just happened. <laughs> okay, so are we, so it's cool. <laughs> Jason Unsworth just says some plot lines just don't work. Oh, <laughs> all right. That's fair. <laughs> we were in uh, either way. It's all good. Yeah. <laughs> I, like, I like the theatrics, though, like a true wrestler. I know, I know. That's that's what we were going for. Unfortunately, the tech, the sound wasn't that that great. Unfortunately, yeah, he was right. getting he was getting the Streamyard Daffy Duck feedback. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Trev just says he really thought some random guy got on. <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be almost be funny as hell. <laughs> just post yeah, like dude. random links out there to YouTube land, and someone accidentally clicks it and just join your stream randomly. It might be entertaining. Oh, I cannot see anything in these stupid sunglasses. Oh, like I'm trying to read the screen and it's really not working. Uh, hey, Patty from Whiskey Den's in. Um, ben, uh, we slipped into the Rick and Morty universe. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I don't know. I'm trying to figure out which one I like better, the Ancient Ancient Age or the Heaven Hill. Mm. Yeah, what what is your what's your preference there? What are you what are you thinking? Uh I don't know. I think I'm gonna blend them both because I like the I like the palette on the Heaven Hill, but I like the finish on the ancient ancient age a little better because it's got it's supposedly that little bit of a higher rye mash bill. So it's got a little bit more bite on the finish. So if you combine them here, mm. let's make a heaven's age. Heaven's age. <laughs> And I see the, the bottles by you, Matt, just seem to keep proliferating. Yeah, they, that Bottom happens around here. Yeah. That's what happens at Matt's house. Pretty much. If you ask for one thing, you end up with about six more yeah. come with it. It's like if, if one bottle touches the other one, they multiply automatically. Pretty much. It's, it's inevitable here. I just keep thinking of what are the plastic bottles I can find. I'm like, oh, I can find this one and this one. I just remember <laughs> well, there's some more. But now I still think this Tom Moore is the best of these. It's Tom Moore is freaking delicious. Who? So who makes Tom Moore? I think Bardstown. It says Barton Distilling Company. So whoever they help in Bardstown's gonna. I don't know who oh, that so Barton, is. So that made that Barton makes that. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. So it used to be the name of the actual distillery was Tom Moore Distillery. They changed it though, like 30, 40 years ago. Mm. It's delicious though. And like I said, for 20 bucks, can't go wrong. Mm. I need to taste it against the Heaven Hills, their bottle of the, the bottle of bond, and against the uh JTS Brown and Jebby Dance bottle and bonds too and see how they are. You know what? I just, <laughs> I just got reminded of something. I'm sipping on this scores B. Um, and it reminds me a little bit here. I'm going to drag this out. It, I'm going to do a taste test to compare these because it reminds me of a better Hague Club. That can't be that difficult because that is one of the worst whiskeys ever made. Oh, for sure. No doubt about that. But it's like it's got the same kind of taste. Hold yeah. On. I don't have another Glencairn, so I guess we're using a pint glass. But There you go. 
<laughs> whatever works. It's only Hay Club. We don't have to like treat it with any respect. Exactly. Yeah, Jeffrey Patron, Heaven Hills non, not bonded six years also. Yeah, the oh, white label. Yeah. yeah, I like that one too. Yep, definitely. Uh, do you guys have early times bottled in bond? Um, Delicious, but it comes in glass. Yes, yeah, I have, yeah, I do have it, but it, yeah, it comes in glass for me. I don't think I've ever seen a, well, maybe I have seen a glass, uh, plastic container of that. Mm. Oh, yeah, the early times. Yeah, that's the blue label. I love that stuff. I found Benchmark. There's another one. Yeah, Benchmark is actually oh, not bad. Go. Benchmark beat out early times when I did like a budget uh, bourbon. I'm not surprised. Wine, yeah. It's quite tasty, actually. Yeah, Trev, that is, it is a giant cologne bottle. That's exactly what it is. Very old Barton, oh, yeah, that's a good one too. That's a very good one, yes. Well, very old Barton, one hundred proof. I've never ever seen it at one seven five though. I only have it in a seven fifty. Yeah, I've seen it at the. Uh, sometimes they pop up at the distillery. You get the big ones, mm. and if you go to kind of the big box stores in Kentucky, you, you'll find it. Nice. Is it glass though? No, they have plastic bottles. Really? Yeah. I've never seen anything plastic from them. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I've seen the giant, the big old glass ones. They look like a big old mace. Like you could bash somebody's head. Yeah, that's what I've got. <laughs> yeah. Not that not you ever would. That'll just be alcohol abuse at that point. Johnny Drum won the bottle and bottle. <laughs> yeah, I saw that Johnny Drum. And you know what? I would agree with that because the uh that that early times bottled and bond, when I did my best whiskey, my uh when I did that March Madness uh, bracket challenge, that made it to, uh, I think it made it pretty close to the final four. It might have been in the final four. That was a while ago. I don't remember. But it had a lot of whiskey since then. <laughs> but yeah, it did very it did very well. So My whiskey day is asking if you hit somebody with the old Barton bottle, would the glass even break? I, I don't know. It's a pretty, it's a, it's a heavy looking bottle. It looks like they just, it looks like a, a lamp. It looks like a genie's lamp or something. Uh, yeah, it does look like a lamp. I have the uh, I have the smaller one up there, like the regular size, but the regular uh, seven fifty. But I don't have the giant one. All right, I have something important to report. Uh, hey Club is still terrible. <laughs> I don't know if anyone. But here's the thing: it rem, it's still it's like if you. Hey Club is like Scoresby if you took out everything, everything good in Scoresby. If you remove every anything nice about Scoresby, the little bit of like fruitiness, the touch of car caramel, mm -hmm. then you have Hey Club. Yeah. So you would you would still take your Scoresby over the Hey Club? Oh yeah. 100%. Oh, nice. And the other thing is this is half the or like a third of the price for like twice the whiskey. Um, <laughs> Every time we mention a whiskey, Matt, <laughs> disappearing. <laughs> we needed to have like you know actual see it. So this is the weapon. The, it's glass. Oh, that's the weapon. Weapon, yeah. But the old Weller bottle looks very close. Oh, it does. Yeah. Oh yeah, look at that. I love those. I love those Barton bottles, though. They're just like the big "fuck you" Barton bottles. They're so <laughs> fat. Uh, uh, it looks like one of those old school wine jugs that my grandfather used to drink out of. It does. Yeah. It does. What are, what are the who's the company? Like uh, Carlo Rossi? Yeah, or, exactly. Uh, Carlo Rossi. Yeah. That's yeah. 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 I like the ones. I like the ones where it's in like a little. They've got a little basket around it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, my, my grandfather drank the Burgundy and he went through like a case uh, every two days. <laughs> no joke. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. You got to you gotta have wine with your meals and wine with your snacks. I think you would bathe in the shit. <laughs> <laughs> wine when you wake up, wine when you go to sleep. Hmm. I have a big uh I have one of those big 750s of Weller as well, the special reserve. 
but that's glass. That's okay. glass, so it doesn't count. So doesn't we can't drink those. I feel like at this point, I, we're kind of getting away from the original premise of this stream. Like, if we had an original premise, it's kind of gone now. I feel like we're at a point where we're just kind of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I only have so many plastic bottles, unfortunately. <laughs> I just think we can get into whatever we want at this point. <laughs> yeah, like I said, the MacGyver is a 175, but it was glass, so I didn't bring it out. <laughs> okay, but yeah, what is what is the best cheap whiskey, period, regardless of plasticity or not? What is what is the best value for money when we're talking bottom shelf? Do, do we have a do we have a, a price, a price minimum or just what you think is the best value? I feel like I feel like you got to keep it if you're if we're talking bottom shelf you got to keep it under 20 under 20 bucks hmm. Ben is Ben Eves is chiming in with saying old crow which I have right here and old crow is solid as hell I there's no denying that I mean, if I if I lived in Kentucky, I'd probably say the I'd probably say the JTS bottle and bond because I love that stuff. But since I can't get it where I am, my go to cheap bottle, I would say is it's, yeah, it's probably the Evan Williams bottle and bond. I think I can get that for fourteen, fifteen bucks, and it's amazing. Yeah, I'm gonna be the Tom Moore bottle and bond, which you have right there, right? That's the last which I have here. Have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Another one, I mean, I don't think it's considered budget, but a lot of people view it as budget, and that's Wild Turkey 101. Mm. Well, you can get it pretty cheap. So That's what I mean. Like, when it's on sale, I could get it for under 20 bucks. Exactly. But I don't consider that a, you know, a, a bottom shelf bourbon, even though some people view it that way, unfortunately. Right. Yeah. It's got a ton of flavor. It's amazing for the price. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Bottom shelf is a very... Um, amorphous term yeah, yeah. True. i feel like it's thrown around it's just like bottom shelf is whatever whatever i don't care to drink necessarily true yeah yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. There, are, there are a lot of stuff on the you know mid to top shelves that i think belong on the bottom shelf right true well and that's and that's i remember somebody i think it was whiskey vault did a video that was like what's your best bottom shelf bourbon and a lot of people like put in stuff that was $35 or whatever. Yeah. You know, and I'm for, yeah. for me, I guess I don't think of that as bottom shelf. You gotta, me like, either. you gotta, you gotta get down into the 20, $15 range. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause benchmark for the 175 is 15 bucks. And that's a great one. My yeah. brother actually uses this and ages it in the mini barrels and turns out awesome. Yeah. Benchmark is a, uh, I do like that one. Um, that one's available here too. Young Buffalo Trace. Yeah. So is Old Crow. Yeah, that's true. I think. Yeah, I, I, agree with you. I don't. I don't think thirty-five dollars is a bottom shelf bourbon. No, no, no that's not like at least. every day for me. Yeah. A thirty-five would be an everyday bourbon, not a bottom shelf bourbon. No. Yeah. If you're if you're like twenty bucks, eighteen bucks and under, then I think you're looking at bottom shelf prices. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, nothing here costs more than twenty dollars. Like this one's fifteen. This one I think was fifteen. This one's yeah. fifteen. I think this one was fourteen. This one was twenty, and this one was fourteen. So I mean, yeah. Um, people, Evan, uh, another one that just popped up in my Evan Williams, seventeen eighty three. Hmm. I haven't had that. That's actually a really good bourbon for the price. It's cheap. It's you can get it for about fifteen, sixteen, seventeen mm. bucks. It's a great bourbon. Nice. Whiskey Ace asks, uh, "How about Black Velvet?" Uh, we don't we don't talk about that whiskey on this. Show. <laughs> it's horrible. It's I mean, on. That was actually oh, we do. That was actually for our worst uh, our March Badness competition. Mm. That was our that I think that was our runner up. Black Velvet was our runner up. I'm not surprised. What yeah. what beat it out? Canadian Mist. No, uh, that was the Central Standard. Oh, oh yeah. Hmm. Okay. What about black box, the boxed whiskey? Ooh, I've, I've heard terrible that. things. I, I only remember watching Scott and Bart do it and I laugh my ass off on their review of it and he just dumps all the table and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is <laughs> hilarious. That was amazing. 
After that review, I chose not to buy it. I was like, that answer's uh, all I need to know. Yeah, uh, Trev Wilson and somebody else brought up uh, Jim Beam Distiller's Cut. Mm, that's a good one. Oh, yeah. yeah. When that first came out, it was like a little over 20 bucks, but now I'm seeing it on shelves for less than 20 Yeah, you can get it here for like $12. Yeah, that's a that's a higher proof Jim Beam. I mean, it's great. It's, I like it's that one. Non-show it's filtered. Yeah, it's a, it's a damn, good, uh, damn good bottle. I have two of them because I was afraid they were going to go away because apparently it was a limited edition. Right. But whenever you hear limited edition from one of the big bourbon producers – you could usually still kind of find those hanging around sometimes. Yeah, for sure. And actually, Jim Beam, what's the what's the one? It's like black something. Um, Jim Beam Black? Is it just Jim Beam Black? Yeah. Is that the name? yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, that's the, that's the one that they say it's extra aged. And yeah. One, extra, one extra like extra aged. Uh, the older ones are way better, though, those Jim Beam Blacks. They changed the... the uh, the age on that one, when it was age state, it was really good. But the newer ones, I, don't, I think they suck. Oh, the really? Older ones. I have. I mean, I haven't had it in years, to be honest. So, You're not missing anything now compared yeah, to the that's older. Fair. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a decent bourbon. It's not it's not terrible. I don't I don't see like when they do the marketing on on TV and they say, you know, this bourbon is, you know, was named whiskey or bourbon of the year. I, I don't know where that happened, but. Uh, everyone, I think local wrestler Baxter Belafonte would like to show us his card. He wrestled <laughs> in the Milwaukee area. <laughs> he was a, a recent, a recent uh, angle here on the Rocket Review. Some people thought it fell flat. I thought it went well, and I would watch. I would watch the rest of this storyline till the end of my days, kind of like a soap opera. But yeah, if you're if you're looking for a local wrestler whose name is Baxter and his last name is Belafonte. He's your man. <laughs> That's a, and then he's gone. <laughs> um, no, I actually, I actually did get to see his debut as Baxter Belafonte, which was super fun. We went to one of the shows, um, and he's got kind of this Freddie, Freddie Mercury, uh, Freddie Mercury, David Bowie gimmick going on. That's but funny. he's got like he's got like the uh um and and Baxter I'm sorry I'm sorry to say that it's like I don't mean to embarrass you but I thought this was great he uh he's got like the Freddie Mercury microphone and he's doing his thing he's coming into his entrance music and he goes like this and the microphone flew out of his hand and <laughs> everybody in the crowd that's awesome I'm sorry, Baxter. I really, actually, really dug that, man. That was me and Erica still talk about that. So does he? So does he drink? Does he bring white claws to the ring with him? Yeah, like, he, he, that's his. That's kind of his gimmick. He's well, because he's a villain, right? He's the he's the heel character, and okay. we're totally breaking mm -hmm. character here. Sorry, Baxter. Again, I'm sorry. I don't. I don't mean to. to I'm. I'm, gen I'm genuinely interested in his character because there's a lot going on. The 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 queen was playing the smoke, the American jacket. The white claw. I mean, this guy. He's like a you know, he's like a walking uh, billboard. Oh yeah. Oh no. He's very. He's very sartorial. He's very over the top. Um, but yeah, the whole thing is like, yeah, he brings the white claws to the ring. Um, and that's kind of his his whole gimmick is is kind of just like this douchey douchey uh, rock star type guy. Um, uh, Donald Ranson saying, Scotch or Irish for the bottom shelf? All Canadian bottom shelf is actually toxic waste that we get rid of. Sorry, A. <laughs> uh, awesome. Excellent. No, that's fair. That's fair. I don't blame you for wanting to get that stuff across the border, man. <laughs> yeah, I can't say Donald's not wrong. That's for sure. Yeah, that I mean, that. that's the thing. I don't know. I guess... I, I I feel like and to to be fair, Canadian mist though. Who is who is it that bottles it down here? It's not their fault that that they're bringing it into the country. It's an American company that's making it, and I don't remember who it is. It's probably Sazerac and their damn Fireball. Yeah, it's somebody. It's not it, that one's not on you guys. That one's on us. We're we're the ones we're the ones bringing that into the country. <laughs> Mm. 
So it, does Sazerac make Canadian mist? I don't think it's Sazerac. I thought it was, was it Brown Foreman or I don't know. Uh, Brad says Collingwood. Oh, no, Donald says Sazerac. Oh, yeah. No, it's Brown. Brown Foreman is the oh, owner. No, Brown, Foreman. Brown Foreman is the owner of Canadian mist. Okay. Oh, sons of bitches. Yeah, that's on them. That is their fault. Someone just commented nipples. Yes. Nipples. Yeah. But they're man nipples, so we're allowed to show them on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Double standards. All right. The man nips. The man nips. Did uh did did um did, did Matt just go get six more bottles? <laughs> I went looking for a decent Canadian in a 175. Do you have a decent Canadian in 175? Oh, it's not That's cheap. Hard, yeah. I mean, 40 Creek's not bad. I like 40 Creek. Oh, okay. I've heard I've heard a lot of divisive opinions on 40 Creek. I really like their their specialty release, the Unity is really good. But it's like 80 bucks. Mike Lizak just says mipples. Yeah, <laughs> mipples. Or, or it's all in caps, so mipples. I feel like 40 Creek is one of those love it or hate it type whiskeys. I know people that love it. And I know people that hate it. Look at that, baby. Look at that handle. It's beautiful. That is one thing I will say. More if you're going to make a, a handle bottle, actually have it have a handle. That is the that is the hill I'm willing to die on. I miss I miss when bottles had actual handles on them. Oh, I got another one with a handle. You don't you don't like these like indented plastic handles? They're just not quite. They're not as fun. It's not a real handle. That's like half a handle at best. Yeah, you know what? Because I want to take the handle and like put it on my shoulder and just right. Like, bah, 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 bah. Yeah, yeah. You got to do it backwards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't do that with these little fancy plastic handles. You gotta you gotta like do the Ron Swanson and pop it on your your. Uh, what do you call it? Your forearm and just yep. just moon just moonshine it. <laughs> there you go. You got the Shivis with the handle on the twelve and the Shivis rocker, so you got the pour built in and everything. Dear Lord, nice. there you go. Great. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's like a little carnival ride. Yeah, for whiskey. It's a, it's a whiskey carnival ride. Yeah, cute. That's a beaut. Um, I will say, speaking of the new. Speaking of Ron Swanson, though, the new Lagavulin, the uh, uh, eleven-year-old, yes, pretty damn good. Oh, I just I just picked up mine today. I haven't cracked it open yet. It's right here. Yeah, the Grim, the Grim Reaper is is looming over it. <laughs> mm. I won't I won't crack that open now. We'll have a review of that coming soon, no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I saw we had that in at the store, I snapped one of those up. It's a good choice. Yeah. But. Yeah, it's like like a whiskey museum, kind of. <laughs> it is a whiskey museum. I remember when I was at your house, man. I walked in a room. I thought it was the bathroom. It was another room of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "That's not the toilet." <laughs> no, nope. um, Jermaine. I think I think it's worth picking up the the new Offerman Lagavulin. Yeah, it's. I mean, okay, it's it's. Follows. I'm gonna pour a little bit because I I'm the boss here. I get to make the rules, and I say I get to pour some. You know what? I want to add. I want to get some air into mine, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pour a little with you, man. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect time. I, I haven't even tasted it yet, so I'll get a first impression here. Yeah, yeah. Do it. Do it up. Um. But yeah, I think. I mean, it's it's it's. I mean, it's it follows the usual lag of in character. Like, if you love Langevin, you're certainly not going to be disappointed by this. Oh, sorry, Reaper. So there wasn't any, um, let's see here. This this didn't have any special casking. This was just straight up. Nope. Yeah, this is just regular. This is this just is regular, regular ex-bourbon barrel. Yeah, as far as I know. Okay. Um. It also has, like, and don't get me wrong, I love Nick Offerman. Not nothing against Nick Offerman, um, but it has like just the most pretentious quote I've ever read on the front. Um, and if, if I may, it goes: "I have traveled the world and sampled many attempts at pleasing nectars, but it is solely the distillation of Isla, a tiny, charismatic Scottish Isle, that has claimed my palate." 
yay, and my heart into the bargain. No one, who has talked, I don't think anyone's talked like that since the 1890s, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, so this is 46% ABV. Oh, yeah, that smells like Lagavulin all day. Mm -hmm. It's not as, see, my thing is, I, was, I wasn't I was sure if I should, was it was going to be closer to, like, the eight-year-old. Because the eight-year-old, for me, is, like, the most iodine of Lagavulin's. <laughs> This one isn't that at all. This one's closer to the 16. Uh, yeah, the uh, the peat, like if you compare this to the eight, the eight, the peat wants to jump out of the glass and kick in the nuts. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. No, this one, yeah, this, this definitely smells, I mean, I know it's, it's kind of obvious, but this definitely smells like it's somewhere between the eight and the sixteen. The sixteen is definitely a little bit more. Uh, the peat to me is a little bit more muted. It's a lot more fruity, and this is somewhere in between. I'm getting the fruit, but I'm still getting a nice punch of peat as well. Yeah, this one reminds me. I this one, and I don't remember what else. There's some other peated scotch we were drinking recently. It really reminds me of chocolate hobnobs. Which are they're they're a British cookie. We we don't have them so much over here. Okay, but they're like uh, they're kind of like digestive bis biscuits. So it's like real grainy but really chocolatey at the same time. Um, they're like my family's favorite cookie. When it, we every Irish fest, we, we there's an Irish fest here in Milwaukee, and every time they they come to town, we buy up a whole bunch of them. Um. Uh oh, Steve Ace is saying that uh the whole bottle is pretentious. That's the point. <laughs> I think you'd be yeah. disappointed if it wasn't. I mean, it is Nick Offerman. That's fair. Yeah. But I feel like he does, I don't know, like his I don't know. I I don't know if I could take him so seriously because he is he is very passionate about Lagavulin, though. I mean, I think he owns some stock in the uh distillery as well. Oh, yeah. No, I have no problem with, like, the sentiment on the bottle. Don't get me wrong, guys. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's, I think the main problem I have is the use of the word yay, uh, Y-E-A. <laughs> That's my problem with it. That's yeah. my problem with it. Well, I don't have one, so I poured the 12 and the 8. There you go. Yeah, yeah this, this, is, this, is, this is typical Lagavulin for me on the nose, uh, barbecued apricots and honey. Yeah, I get the honey. I definitely get the honey. I always get kind of a barbecued apricot type thing and a little bit of um, like a roasted almond on the nose as well. Love it. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, That's, it's very good. We're going for a sip of this, baby. And like the, uh, yeah, Jermaine, it's not just a gimmick. It's it's not just a gimmick. They This is actually some really good whiskey. As you would expect from a Lagavulin release. Yeah, we're not going to screw with you. This is one of the more um, uh, like almond, nuttier, forward releases I've had. Hmm. I'm getting a lot of um, like smoked almonds on the palate on this one. A little bit of fruit, but there's a ton of smoke too. But again, Lagavulin is one of those. This is the first pour. I think this is just going to get sweeter with air time. Yeah. That's yeah I'm on, I've had a couple of these now. I'm actually getting... Because I was talking with Erica about this, I was saying this actually comes off as very slightly citrusy to me. Oh yeah, um, like and and that's it seems to be growing the longer it's exposed to air. Um, so yeah, there's a little bit of a of a salty note on here too, which I like. Yeah, and it's not the i. There's a touch of iodine medicinal more so than the 16. I, for my my opinion, Lagavulin is the least iodiney of. Mm -hmm. The Isla distilleries. Um, but this one definitely has just a touch of that. Not as not as much as Erica likes, though. Erica was kind of like, mm, it's not maritime -y enough. It needs to need to smell smell more like Poseidon's taint. Well, she likes that. She likes the salty, huh? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's her thing. If it doesn't, if it doesn't taste like salty wet band-aid, it's not for her. <laughs> so, she, so she maritime as far as like the Springbank funk or like more like the Talisker Oban type. Uh, it's Tal Talisker more so, but Lafroig is her first and true love. Okay. Yeah, Lafroig is always going to be it. Yeah, this, this is actually milder than I thought it would be. 
It is. It is. It's not as punchy. And I think, well, it makes sense. They're probably, they probably put together a blend that was slightly less punchy just because they knew Parks and Rec fans were going to be buying it. Yeah. You know, it was kind of like with the, uh, the nine, which I ran out of the, the Game of Thrones one. Oh yeah, I, I was like the I like the nine, but the nine was was very floral to me. I really yeah. like the nine. It was I very love the nine. I think I yeah. bought three bottles of it. it was so good. yeah, extremely floral uh, Lagavulin. Very nice on the palate, though. Yeah, like the nine was way sweeter and kind of heather honey compared mm-hmm. to like the eight. And I mean, I think that's a conscious choice of like their yeah. marketing it too. I would have to compare it to the eight, but this just seems like a little bit more of a muted eight. I wonder if I – I think I got some more eight. I'm going to pop that out. Well, how much time do we have? We got five minutes. I'm popping out the eight. Oh, hey, I forgot I have Colson's in here. Of course, Colson's too while I'm at it. What is, <laughs> what is Colson's? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, what is Colson's? Colson's is the Walgreens Canadian uh, whiskey brand. That's I didn't know they had their own brands. That's awesome. I, I don't know if Walgreens actually – Walgreens either – I don't know if they – bought it themselves or if they yeah. uh they just have like an exclusive right to sell it in wisconsin that's great you can get it at at uh at walgreens's yeah because of course here we can't ha- we don't have any liquor at walgreens all just have beer and wine that's an interesting interesting thing i don't know the different all the different rules always are fun to me yes they're stupid they should stop all this ridiculous petty laws from the prohibitions. Give us our damn whiskey wherever the hell we go. Oh, I hear you. And Amazon should be able to sell it and, you know, all It's that. just stupid. It's like, come on. Yeah. Oh, hell, I mean, it, okay, let's look at it this way. To look at, I mean, other countries, it's 18. We're the only country, I think, of in the world that's 21 is the freaking law to drink. It's stupid as all hell. Yeah, it is true. I think part of the, part of the problem is, like, if we're going to move it down to 18, like – we we have to well i don't know it's a double edged sword cuz like people are always like oh if you move it down to 18 there's going to be more traffic accidents no just move the driving age to 21 problem yeah, solved right <laughs> yeah. really what's more dangerous in reality a kid driving or someone drinking i mean yeah. you know, logistically speaking a driver's way more dangerous without any alcohol that's a kid just because no experience right because well, like i think we're right here. i drink a lot more underage then I, I i used to get blackout drunk every night underage mm. because it was fun to go get drunk when you're a kid yeah, and it's no longer fun it's painful right at some point like at some point you mature out of it yeah and exactly and kids just seem more stupid these days i think <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. i think generally if you if you make if you make it 18 you create a healthier drinking culture and you're like you don't have to get blackout drunk because you're drunk. yeah like in europe a lot of like this yeah. was like 16 in a lot of places I visited as a kid, we'd go drink there. And they're like, yeah, you 16 was drinking and driving was 18. They said, you got to learn how to drink before you learn how to drive because it's just safer. Mm. And they're right. Oh, my God. Yeah. This eight. Uh, so which which eight do I have? I think this is 2016. Yeah, 2016. Um, the eight is just so much more iodine Yeah. That's what I mean. The eleven is just it, it. It has the same attributes as eight. It's just a little bit more muted. Hmm. Whereas the eight comes after you like a freight train. What's yeah. the proof? Is the proof the same on those two? The eight and the eleven. No, the eight, the eight. The eight is a fifty. I think it's fifty something percent. Mm-hmm. Mine's at forty eight. Yeah, uh, the eleven is at uh, forty six. Forty six. Yeah. Okay, so two points. Not a huge difference. Not a huge difference, but. It's it's amazing though what a few years will do in the taste of a peated whiskey. Yeah, yeah, Tide Pod whiskey. That's right. Oh it's, yeah, it's so I lazy. Need right you need Tide yeah. Pod, Ed. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, kids are freaking chewing Tide Pods. You think uh, letting them drink a whiskey at eighteen is going to be a big oh. deal? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it would be safer. At least the Tide Pod's probably going to kill them. At least yeah, the whiskey right. won't. Um. But seriously, though, I do want to try one of those Glenlivet seaweed whiskey cocktail things. It sounds so weird. But, yeah, now cool. the problem is now everybody wants to try them. We're talking about great marketing. I mean, brilliant marketing. Controversial as hell. Everybody knows the name, though. It's true. It's true. Brilliant marketing move. It's true. You can't go wrong. Uh, I mean, 
I'm gonna. I'd buy, it. I'd buy it just to try it, just because. Why not? We are coming to the end of the stream because right. I know I know we wanted to finish up in about an hour. Jason, you got you got important guy stuff to do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm gonna make it my my end of the night blend as I do. So what do I have left? I've got Colson's Canadian lag eight lag eleven. And egg club. So that's as is tradition. We're gonna mix them all. And before we say goodnight. Well, I got something special for you. I got blueberry vodka just for you, Ed. <gasps> oh man. Oh, that's sweet. I want I kind of want to know what that tastes like. I love blueberries. Actually, it's really it's one of my buddies. This is from their distillery. It's freaking actually really good. And the tradition of uh, Halloween, uh, my last pour with you guys will be uh, the Walking Dead Spirit of the Apocalypse bourbon. Ooh, Very nice. Cool. Uh, actually, ain't half bad. I've had worse. So, let's see how this. Oh man, dang! That All right, here, so uh, let me let me jump off. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump on with uh, John on uh, blind whiskey reviews. Uh, I have to go to oh, head over to his stream, but Ed, I want to thank you for inviting me tonight. This was a blast. Uh, you look amazing. Thank you so thank much. You coming on, dude. Thank you for slumming it down here with the uh, with the rotten folk. <laughs> oh, man, it's 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 all good. It's I was so happy to meet you in um in uh, in Austin. I had such oh, a yeah, it was a ton of fun. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. So, yeah, anytime. I'd love to have you on. I'd love to send you, like, a blind tasting or something. We'll definitely do something soon. And, Matt, um, as always, the, uh, the 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 Russian Ruski, the Peckers. Yes. Always nice to see you, buddy. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. All right. Everybody. Thanks, guys. Until next time, make sure you hit that like button on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't. And stay rotten. Cheers. Cheers.